Good morning, church. <laughs> Let's celebrate. It's good to be back inside again together after 13 and a half months. Woo! It's good to have those who are here with us. It's also good to have those who are with us at home, but they are with us in a new way as we are live streaming for the first Sunday. So we hope that they enjoy that. This morning, we especially welcome Becky Lynn Gregory. <laughs> This is her first Sunday with us as our new interim pastor, and she is one of our very own Timothys. So we will be singing this morning. Those who are here, please stay masked and sing softly so to limit the spread of germs. But those who are at home can sing as loud as you want to. <laughs> After service, we can greet each other outside as you are comfortable. And also wanted to mention that uh, the prayer box is here up front if you have a prayer request to turn in. And now, let us join together as we sing. Let's all stand. Christ is made the sure foundation, Christ the head and cornerstone, chosen of the Lord and precious, binding all the church in one. a little and continue in this mind and heart for worship and sing together in my life lord be glorified cue tape <laughs>
our call to worship and opening prayer. Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. Abide in me as I abide in you. Jesus said, I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Jesus said, this is my commandment, love one another as I have loved you. And now you may be seated. I'm going to invite our children to come and meet me at the steps. Remember, we need to spread out a little bit. Um, any age children, even the young at heart, are welcome to come. Um, we're going to come around here to the front if you want. And we'll see if I'll be able to stand back up once I get down. <laughs> hello, hello. How are you? Welcome. I am here first to introduce myself. I'm Pastor Becky Lynn, and you're going to be seeing me on Sundays. You'll see me at Bible school this summer, and maybe even in some of your worship and wonder time, if they let me go in there sometimes. I'm very excited to get to know you. Do you guys have any idea what we're starting together, why I'm here? I am called an interim pastor. And an interim pastor has a lot of duties to do to help you all um, say goodbye and grieve Pastor Troy. He was pretty great, wasn't he? Pretty great, so we'll celebrate that. But to also get ready to, for a new pastor. And that could take a while. So you guys are gonna see a lot of me. And not only could it take a while, it's a lot of work. we got to do a lot of stuff. So I want to give you a little example. Do you guys like Cincinnati chili? Gold Star, Skyline, all those good stuff? Which, do you guys have a favorite? Gold Star, Skyline? Skyline? You know, I'm kind of weird. I grew up here, and I like Skyline if I want a three-way, but if I want Coney's, I go to Gold Star. So, but my example for you is... You get, you get out of what you put, you get something out of something that whatever you put into it. So if you work hard on something, it's going to be really good, right? If you don't work very hard and you just do it halfway, is it going to be as good? So I have this little, um, this little can here. Skyline chili. All you got to do is open the can and heat it in the microwave. Do you think it's very good? It is nowhere near the original, let me tell you. Not the same as if you go have it homemade at the store, right? Well, I can put a little bit more work into it, and I have this little packet. And then you add to this packet some tomato paste and some ground beef and some water, and it simmers for a couple of hours, and it's Cincinnati chili. Do you think it's better than the can? Better than the can, right? Because it's, we, I've put more work into it, right? Well, there's one more thing. My mom has a recipe for homemade Cincinnati chili. And if you notice, look at all these ingredients. There's like 20 ingredients to make this stuff. And my mom used to make that for us when we were kids. And let me tell you, it is better than getting it at the restaurant. But you think this is easy? It's not. It's, it's like an all-day affair. Plus, you've got to make sure you have all of these unusual ingredients. Did you all know there's chocolate in Cincinnati chili? And there's chocolate and cinnamon. Yeah, you bet you didn't know that. So you've got to have all the ingredients, first of all. So gathering all the ingredients takes some work. Then again, it's got to simmer and cook all day long kind of thing. But let me tell you... There's nothing that beats my mom's recipe for homemade sensei chili. So that's kind of like interim work. We can be easy. 
you know, we can just open the can and invite our next pastor in without doing any work. Do you think then the relationship with the new pastor is going to be very good? Probably not. We could go halfway. It's not bad in a pinch if we went halfway. Do we want to do that for a new pastor? Do we want to only go halfway? Or do we want to go all out and work hard? We want to work hard, don't we? So we've got a lot of work to do. And I am over the top excited to come and do this work with you guys, okay? Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for interim ministry. We thank you for this time that we can do the work that we need to get ready for the next phase, the next journey in this church's life. Lord, I thank you for these little ones, and I am so excited to get to know them through ministry, through Sunday school and Bible school and worship and wonder and children's time and everything. Lord, thank you for the day. Thank you for allowing us to be together in your church again. Keep us safe and help us to keep safety at the front of our minds. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Not so sure if the steps are the problem. The high heels might be a little bit more of the problem today. <laughs> but I felt like I needed to look grown up for some odd reason. It is so good to be with you. As we come to our time of prayer this morning, um, I was supposed to look in the box. Nothing new yet, but please remember that you can put those in the box before or after worship each Sunday. So what we'll do each Sunday, um, as long as I'm leading our pastoral prayer, is that this prayer is not just about me and my prayers, but it's about all of us. So I'm going to invite you to spend a few moments in silent prayer, lifting before God your own joys and your own concerns, and laying at God's feet your own sins and repentances. Then I'll lead us in our pastoral prayer, and we'll follow together with the Lord's Prayer. Again, I invite you to pray that Lord's Prayer using any words or any language that you feel comfortable to pray, for it's your prayer too. So let's pray together. Lord God, we give you thanks for all your gifts to us, for daily food, for health, for each breath we take, for freedom to choose, and for the gifts of your word, your power, and your love. Our hearts are truly overwhelmed, O oh God, when we consider how you have entrusted so much to us. May we be worthy of that trust. May we be a people who are unafraid to live as fully and as richly as you want us to live. Help us, O oh God, as followers of Jesus, to multiply all that you have given us, to risk spreading your word and perhaps see it misunderstood, to gamble by loving those whom others think only worthy of hate, to take chances by doing good to those who have not done good to us, Help us be faith-filled and desire to increase in your glory and your goodness in this world. We pray, O oh God, for the church gathered here today, here and around the world, in person and through Zoom, that it may encourage all of its members to discover, develop, and use all their gifts, those of nature and those of grace. We pray, O oh God, especially for those who are poor in body or in spirit, for those oppressed and heavy laden, for those sick or in despair. 
Minister by your spirit and by us to all those for whom we have prayed, those whom we have lifted aloud, and those who remain unnamed in our hearts and on our minds. And help us, God, to walk faithfully in the path of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray this day, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Before I begin our scripture, I can't tell you how excited and honored I am to be with you during this next phase of our journey together. For those of you who don't know me, I grew up right here in Mason, Ohio, when Mason, Ohio was nothing more than a farm town. I tell folks I graduated with about 145 people, and they were the same 145 we started kindergarten with, give or take one or two. So it is good to be back home in that sense as well, although Mason is not as all, at all what it used to be. I have two degrees um, related to ministry. I have a master's in church music. As you can tell, I love music. I've received that from the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary in Louisville, and back when I was still Southern Baptist, and then I found disciples and went back to seminary to get my master's of divinity. And I got that from the Earlham School of Religion. So I studied with the Quakers in Richmond, Indiana, which was a life-changing experience. And along the road, I, I met George Reese and Tylersville Road, meeting back at the Hopewell School back then, um, and became disciples back then and have been disciples ever since. I bleed chalice red is what I tell people. Um, just recently, I've served, well, I've served churches in Illinois and Iowa, and just recently was the interim pastor at Mount Healthy Christian Church. And I walked with Mount Healthy through the sale of a building and into a new future. So um, I am excited. That was hard, hard, hard ministry, but to this day has been the most rewarding ministry I've ever done with a congregation. So found out during that time that interim ministry is definitely my call. So that's what I am here to offer you, uh, my training, my gifts, and my love for interim ministry. Thank you for letting me be here with you. Our scripture this morning is found from the Gospel of John, the 15th chapter, verses 1 through 8. Hear the words of the Lord. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine giver. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. Would you pray with me? And now, O oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable unto you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. 
Unfortunately, these days, some of us feel that if we don't check our smartphones every few minutes, we are going to miss out on something crucial. Maybe even the event of the year or the email that will change the course of our lives. And it's even more embarrassing when we're on our phones and we don't even seem to be aware that we're ignoring folks. Oftentimes, when it's brought to our attention, especially to that one who we should be paying attention to, it's nothing less than embarrassing. So a common lament in today's society, whether we work in an office, we work at home, we're a full-time student or a full-time parent, is that there's simply not enough hours in the day. Schedules are too full, even more so these days. Responsibilities too numerous and commitments are too demanding. Given this, a common reason as to why we don't eat better, we don't exercise, we don't pray or study the Bible more often is that who has the time? We can easily miss here the invitation we have in today's gospel passage as yet another demand on our time. We can easily make the assumption that what often works well in one aspect of our lives works equally as well in our spiritual lives. In this case, the motto of every controlling and rushed person, which is all of us at one time or another, is this. If I don't do it, it won't get done. But listen to what Jesus has told us in this gospel. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. And Jesus goes on to tell us very clearly who is doing the work. And it is not you and me, my friends. He removes every branch in me that does not bear fruit. It's not us. The image of the people of God as God's vineyard is a very old image. It goes all the way back to the Jewish Psalms as well as other places in the First Testament. Listen to part of Psalm 80. You brought a vine out of Egypt. You drove out the nations and planted it. You cleared the ground for it. It took deep root and filled the land. Again, though, notice that it is God who is doing all of the planting here. It wasn't the people. It was God. So let's think of all the other I am statements found in the Gospel of John. I shared one with you last week. I am the good shepherd. There's also I am the light of the world. I am the gate, I am the resurrection and life. All these I am statements in the Gospel of John point to the reality of the availability of God. It's ironic that Christianity has the reputation of being an otherworldly religion focused almost exclusively on how to get to heaven, how to get somewhere else. Maybe you've seen some bumper stickers that read like this. Jesus is coming, look busy. Or, friends don't let friends miss out on heaven. It may sound surprising, but this kind of theology of a distant God is what most of us are comfortable with, actually, because it ultimately pushes God to the sidelines and we can remain in control. We are very good at being busy and taking on responsibility. And we rather prefer this to being on the receiving end of change. There's that C word, it only took me one day. But as Jesus says in today's reading, abide in me as I abide in you. Jesus addresses us twice with the phrase, I am the vine. There is a promise here. 
I am the vine and you are the branches. Jesus is asking each of us simply to be with him. Just connect. This sounds deceptively easy. Listen now to the words of an ancient liturgical prayer that's spoken even today in many worship settings. It says, Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. I hear that it's telling us it's okay to relax a bit. And stop worrying about hiding these parts of ourselves that we don't want others, and surely not God, to see. We can abide in God just as we are. Instead of busying, busying ourselves to keep God at a distance. The promise of Jesus, the vine, the gate, the light, the shepherd, is abundant life here and now, not just in some future time. God is doing more in our lives than any of us are even aware. God is Jesus. God in Jesus is simply inviting each of us to take time to notice. But the trick, of course, in noticing is to let God do what God needs to do and for us to get out of the way. Jesus is very clear on this point when he says, I am the vine, you are the branches. That is what abiding in the power of the word is all about. Not placing impediments in God's way by trying to do for ourselves what God wants us to do. He wants us to reshape our hearts, our bodies, and our minds to receive the forgiveness that is always being offered. Today, we are beginning a new journey together. One that will keep us all very busy as we prepare our church, our minds, and especially our hearts for a new settled pastor. But let us not forget in this time to just be, to let God steer the ship and lead and feed our souls. Hopefully, especially now, we can hear Jesus' words as the beautiful invitation it truly is, abide in me as I abide in you. And when we do, we will all be able to say together, Amen. Each week in the Christian Church Disciples of Christ, we give you an opportunity to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. If you've never made that decision today, we invite you to do so. As we're singing our communion hymn, I'll be available to meet you down front. I'll share with you a affirmation, com confirmation of your profession of faith, and we'll look forward to your baptism in the near future. Maybe you have made that decision already in one way or another, but today you'd like to reaffirm and rededicate your life and reconnect as a vine, as a branch on the vine. We do so the same way. I'll meet you down front and do the same thing. Or maybe today, our first day back to open public worship, in-person worship, you'd like to join Compass Christian Church. We invite you to do that, too. So let's stand together for our communion invitation hymn, Come Share the Lord.
Christ table is spread for all of us, a place of gathering, of fellowship, and of praise. Let us rejoice as we respond to God's gracious invitation to receive these gifts of Christ's body and blood, that we may be strengthened to live as faithful disciples. Jesus tells us that on the night when he was betrayed, he took bread and broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, this is my body, broken for you. Eat this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, after the meal, he took a cup. And when he had blessed it, he gave it to his disciples and said, This is the new covenant in my blood poured out for you. Drink this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim my death and resurrection until I come again. Let us share together the bread that you have in your packets. Why is the bread one so much harder than the other one? Let us partake together. And in the same manner, let's partake the juice. Wow. It was good. Um, yeah, I was going to talk about how we ought to be giving more and stuff, but I... I just want to say it's nice to be receiving. It's good to be here today. I've missed this. I really am. As we gather around, though, we, we need to be a light in God. We need to be the, God is the Christ is the vine and we are the branches. We're called to serve, to give up our times, talents, and offerings. We have Matthew 25 ministers box to serve. There are ways we can serve. One way is by, by giving. Uh, we have offering plates in, in, in the back if you're here. If you haven't received it, those, those are available. If you're at home, you can give through online to our, our mail into the church, you got our address at our, our website. And you can look at our website and see ways you can contribute in time, talent. We are called to serve, and it's, it, it's important. And not just for help others, but also to serve help you yourself too, because as you, as you give, you come to realize that as you do give, it keeps your priorities straight. You know, if all you have is money, you never have enough. But if you're willing to give and help others, you're going to find, if you, if you give 10%, you're going to find that that 90% is plenty. And you can love and serve God. So, thank you. It has been good to be in the house of the Lord, amen? Church life events. I think that's another word for announcements. Is that correct? We don't need those? We don't use that word. Oh, I don't get to sing the Kim Christian announcement song? Darn. I only know of one, and that's elders meeting Tuesday. Is that correct? I, that's the only one I think I know of. What's it say? Mother's Day next Sunday, folks. Um, May 11th, so which is a week from Tuesday, general board meeting. And then May 30th, following worship, another congregational meeting. Didn't y'all just have one of those? <laughs> it has been good. Thank you again. And I forgot to introduce someone pretty special to me. My significant other, Jeff Shelton, uh, will be with us when he can be. So uh, he works long hours and uh, officially lives in Alexandria, Kentucky. So I won't hold that against him. But so... <laughs> 
Let's stand together for our closing hymn. And then followed by our benediction. to be together as the family of God. Because God loved us, we love one another. Because God forgives us, we forgive one another. Because God abides in us and God is love, love abides in us and we abide in God. Go, believing in the power of God's love, forgiving and loving others. Amen. Um.